Yes, George? Where's Mary? Oh, well, I, I, I can't... Uh... I don't know how you know these things, but tell me, where is she? I'm if you not... know where she is, tell me where my wife is. I'm not supposed to tell. Please, Clarence, tell me where she is. You're not going to like it, George. Where is she? She's an old maid. She never married. Where is Mary? Where is she? she? Where is she? She's just about to close up the library. It's almost like she ended up a Carmelite nun, right? Like in a monastery. Because nobody, nobody had the charm of a George Bailey. Nobody had the sex appeal of, you know, nobody's saying Buffalo Girls, once you come out tonight with her. And as a result, you know, she, she never had sex ever. <laughs> you know, It's like, I don't know. It's, I, I, I guess I've never bought that. I have no doubt in my mind that even in the alternate reality, Mary would have still been this very strong, independent woman. The most common complaint about Wonderful Life may be Mary's fate in the universe where her spouse, George Bailey, was never born. Looked at from our modern perspective, the two options presented to her are spinsterdom or having a husband and kids. This is Emily St. James, media and culture critic. And yet I think if you like look around the edges of this movie, it's more complicated than that. Mary! Don't you know me? What's happened to us? I don't know. You let me go. Mary, please. Oh, don't do this to me. Please, Mary. Help me. Where's our kids? I need you, Mary. Help me. I think what is interesting is it's not that she lacks for options for marriage. She has plenty. It's that she wants to marry George and has since she was a kid. So uh, if she doesn't marry him, she's going to get a job at the library. And like, yes, the film kind of treats that as a tragedy. But I think both in the way that Donna Reed plays it and in the ways that you can sort of think about the movie's internal logic, I don't think it's treated as a curse so much as it's treated as like, these two people were meant to be together and they're not together. I think it's more complicated than, you know, the read of it that is like, oh my gosh, the, this movie thinks working at a library is the worst thing that could happen. And being single is the worst thing that could happen. This movie thinks Mary and George belong together and it carries with it sexist assumptions about that. But like it deep down just thinks these two people make each other better. And honestly, if two people make each other better, maybe they should be married. I, I still believe that today. I went off to college in Indiana, went to DePaul University for a while, and then transferred to Western Washington University, which is how I ended up in this part of Washington State. You've met Monica previously, the only daughter of Frank Capra's only daughter. Uh, here, she's again speaking alongside her only daughter, Hannah. And I uh, graduated from there, got a teaching degree, and now I'm an elementary librarian. I went to Western Washington University, like she did for my undergrad, and uh, traveled around a bit, lived in Alaska for a little while, and then went and got my master's degree in library and information science from Syracuse. Um, and then I now work in records management for the EPA. So um, library adjacent, for sure. I think it's hilarious, but I think my my grandfather really loved uh, books, and he and my grandmother was a huge book collector, and they had a rare book collection that was quite famous for a while there. Um, but uh, it, it's funny because it was sort of it's sort of ironic in our family now. It's like, oh my gosh, she's at the library, you know, like what a terrible thing. <laughs> you know, being a librarian, it's not an easy job. You don't just shelve books all day. You're a progressive, critical, analytical thinker. You are somebody who, you know, has a strong focus and concentration. I think that makes you a lot stronger as a person that you know how to have conversations, you know how to talk to people. Tanya Hussain, a writer and editor, thinks looking at Mary's outcome without George as a tragedy does a disservice to her uh, and to librarians. Seeing Mary, for me, is somebody who is very independent in both realms. When she's Mary with George in you know the life with all the children, she's doing a great job. She takes care of her family. She's like the utmost 
definition of feminism and the fact that she knew exactly what she wanted. Mary will always be a feminist in both lives. Librarians back in the 40s, they actually made quite a lot. They made 18,000 in wages versus the you know, average worker making 12,000 a year. And that was an endowed by the Carnegie Foundation. Saying that she's an old maid and she resorted to nothing, it's ridiculous. I would be remiss if I did not mention that the Maranek Public Library was voted best library in Westchester County, and we are super proud of that. I brought you briefly to Mamaroneck, New York, in a previous episode where Norman Rockwell grew up. This is Jennifer O'Neill, their librarian. I'm proud to be a librarian, but library director is a totally different set of skills. Mm -hmm. I manage people um, and uh, help manage this facility, manage the budget. Um, and uh, have all of our dealings with external um, community as well. I report to the board. Uh, I'm their only employee. These are all my employees here. Okay. We have an open position currently for $55,000. It's not common to own your own home um, when you work at a library. Uh, I have some librarians who are married um, and have been in the profession for a long time, but their spouse um, probably makes more than they do to make that a possibility. See, if, if you were to ask me to say a George Bailey type hero, I would say Leslie, no. Frank Capra's great-granddaughter again, Hannah, a super fan of television show Parks and Recreation with actor Amy Poehler playing small-town leader Leslie Nope. I have, in fact, seen it all the way through three times. It is a, about a main character named Leslie Nope, who is the deputy director of the Parks and Recreation Department of Pawnee, Indiana. And um, she cares very deeply about her community and the people around her, and she just wants to make everyone's lives better. And she runs into roadblocks that are her coworkers in the community that she serves, but she attempts to overcome those and successfully does on multiple occasions and helps show them that their community is great and that they can help it out in small, meaningful ways every day. During college, Hannah would watch the show weekly with a group of friends as each episode aired on NBC. Yeah, it was just a bunch of us who all, we were all finishing college or had just finished college. So we were all like about to go out into the world, right? And we saw Leslie as an example of what to do in the world. Her motto is always just try your hardest and try your best. I, I think a lot of us have carried that with us since then. Leslie's best friend, Ann Perkins, is played by Rashida Jones whose grandfather, you'll recall, played that special role in seeing Wonderful Life end up the people's movie. One of my best friends, we, we have a joke that I'm the Ann Perkins to her, Leslie Nope, because she's like really the go-getter uh, between the two of us. And she's the one who like, she will push me to go try new things or to learn more about an issue or to just get more involved. And I love their friendship. It's so just lovely and beautiful. Like they're not ashamed how much they care for each other. You can talk about the Bechtel test too if you want to here at very base level of feminism for a television show is two women on screen both who have names who are having a conversation about something other than man and parks and rec just flew right by that i think maybe in one of the first scenes because leslie and ann are introduced immediately to each other and they're talking about a park <laughs> so you just kind of knew right away that this show was gonna not pit women against each other but hopefully help uplift them Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the event we are doing tonight, which is a city council candidate debate that we're going to start now. Does this affect your decisions as a city councilor? I want to run this town like a business. My opponent, Leslie Nope, has a very anti-business agenda. Recently, my dad told me that if Leslie Nope wins the election, they'll probably have to move Sweetums to Mexico. That would be terrible, of course. Thousands of people in this town would lose their jobs and we all wouldn't have candy. Now, I'm not saying that is going to happen, but I do know this. If I win, I bet I could get them to stay. Wow. Shocking stuff. I'm very angry. I'm angry that Bobby Newport would hold this town hostage and threaten to leave if you don't give him what he wants. It's despicable. Corporations are not allowed to dictate what a city needs. That power belongs to the people. Bobby Newport 
and his daddy would like you to think it belongs to them. I love this town. And when you love something, you don't threaten it. You don't punish it. You fight for it. You take care of it. You put it first. As your city councilor, I will make sure that no one takes advantage of Pawnee. This is my home. You are my family. And I promise you, I'm not going anywhere. Holy shit, Leslie, that was awesome. Of course, you'll remember that before Amy Poehler was Leslie Nope, early in her career, she was Mary Hatch in the parody Escape from Wonderful Life, co-created by Jay Martell. But one thing I noticed when, when we were taking apart the movie was what a strong character she was, which again, would have been very easy to underwrite that character, make her like arm candy for George. And I fell in love with that actress when I was watching that movie over and over again. And she's just like an amazing, it's an amazing performance, right? And in the way that she she in some ways represents the great part of the town, is, is embodied in Mary, right? The original film gives us one version, but now, thanks to Jay and Amy, we have the opportunity to see another, a stranger version. George is trying to escape from the film because it's been running for so long, and he's so tired of the part of living in Bedford Falls, being George Bailey. That is, until Mary takes his place. Clarence. Yes, George? Where's Mary? Well, I uh, can't... Uh... That's my agent. You've got to tell me. Where is she? Is it a Polly Shore movie? Oh, my God, it's not a porno. George, you really don't want to know. Please, Clarence, tell me where she is. You're not going to like it, George. Where is she? She's playing George Bailey in It's a Wonderful what Life. Mean? That's horrible. Where is she, she? She's shooting the scene outside the building alone. Well, well, all right, Uncle Billy. See you tomorrow. All right. Okay. Mary, what the hell are you doing wearing my hat and my clothes? Are you crazy? Mary. Mary. Mary! Mary! Mary. Mary. How dare you steal my part? I saved you from the bush! A hot dog. I'm George Bailey! No, I'm George Bailey! What the heck are you doing trying to be me? What's going on, Mary? Uh, uh, I'm George Bailey! No, I'm George Bailey! No, I'm George Bailey! Hiya, George! Hiya, George! Hey, there's two Georges! Hiya, Georges! Hiya, two Georges! He's ruining the movie again! Ruining the movie? I made this movie what it is! She can't act! Because that's... You know, George is trying to get away from the town. George is trying to get away from Mary. George is trying to get away from commitment. George is trying to get away from growing up, from, from all the things you have to do as an adult, the sacrifices you have to make, the, the, you know, your dreams, right? Like everyone, no matter how successful you are, you, you, you know, you get married, you have kids, there's things that fall by the wayside. And, that's, and, and 